The Westwinds Breviary is our gift to you during the shelter-in-place order concerning COVID-19. We offer you hope and healing as lovers and followers of Jesus Christ believing these short online liturgies will elevate your spirits and unify your homes. May God bless you richly as you endeavor to renew your mind and love your neighbor. Good evening, church. Never look backwards, longing all you've left behind. The future's forward. Genesis chapter 19 tells the story of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. It is a disgusting and horrifying story, probably not for all the ways that you assume. But to read the story carefully is to come away with an increasingly deep pit in your gut and a tremendous amount of grief. However, whenever I come to difficult portions of the scripture, I force myself to read them again and again and again, trusting that there must be something there for me to learn. Tonight, let us look at the story of Lot and his wife, who, you will recall, have been warned to flee from Sodom and Gomorrah prior to those cities being destroyed, and they were instructed explicitly not to turn around and look back as they fled. Verse 23. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And the Lord overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of those cities and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Lot's wife disobeyed God and became a pillar of salt. What a fascinating, macabre little tale that is. Lot's life was leaving her old life, the, the city she knew, the ground that she knew, the people that she knew. She was going in fear, in holy terror, into a new life that she didn't want, that she didn't choose, but that God had instructed. And she can't, she can't bear to leave her home. And so she turns around and looks to see everything that she once relied on totally destroyed. I think this is the fate of all people who are pushed into a future they did not choose. As we go, I, I don't want this. I don't know what's happening. This is so terrifying. And so we turn around and we look back. We look, we look back. God says, don't look back, but we, we look back because we're, we're not sure. Maybe it's still there. I, I bet if we turn around and, and look, maybe it's still there. Maybe God doesn't send fire from heaven. Maybe the old ways aren't gone. Maybe the old stations aren't gone. Maybe the old people aren't gone. Maybe the old country's not gone. Maybe... No, that whole thing is gone. It's gone. You can't go back. There is no such thing as life before COVID-19. The world is different. The world has changed. You can't go back. You can't. It's not there anymore. Life will never be the same. But it's not just that Lot's wife dies. She, she's turned into a, a pillar of salt, which is such a weird judgment. First, it's not just salt. It's a pillar of salt. Pillars are, are markers. In the ancient world, they were like um, highway signs or, or, or monuments. So anybody that saw this pillar would do what? They would know this story. Th this pillar would have taken on significance. It would have grown in legend. Everybody would have known that's the place where Lot's wife perished because she couldn't let go of the past. And it's not just that she turned into a pillar, but a pillar of, of salt. She's, a, she's preserved. Remember, in the ancient world, salt wasn't primarily for flavoring food. It was for keeping things from spoiling. Meaning this is an eternal marker. Here's a reminder that anyone so bound to the past that they cannot let go will never enter God's intended future. Friends, the only thing we have left is the future. The past is gone. The present is gone. 
gone, gone. You, you, can't, you can't do anything with the present. The only thing upon which you can act, the only place that you have any hope is for the future. And in order for you to go into the future, you've got to stop looking back and you've got to stop behaving as though you're still living in the past. We cannot perform those old actions. We cannot rely on those old relationships. We cannot go through those old motions because they no longer fit the circumstances. The circumstance now is to push forward. And maybe you've got to do that with tears in your eyes. And maybe you've got to do that while hanging onto the hand of your husband. But you've got to go. So go. Because God has instructed it. Because God has ordained it. Because God will preserve you as you do. This evening, I want to walk you through an exercise that um, might deepen your understanding and expand your imagination uh, about the Lord's Prayer. If you've been around Christian spirituality or the church at all for any length of time, this is probably a prayer that you have heard. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, this prayer throughout the history of the church has been so important, uh, so meaningful to so many people. And, and for many of us, it's really centered us uh, in, our, in, our, in our faith and in our belief. Uh, but like all things that we've done for a long time, uh, this prayer has the um, potential to become uh, a ritual, to become something that we can just say really quickly without thinking about what it means. Um, but for the first people who would have heard it, uh, this prayer was revolutionary. Remember, they, they had never heard it before. Uh, it, was, it was something that was new. It was fresh. And, and even in the early history of the church, when people would repeat it, it was full of, of meaning to them. And, and so one of the things that has helped me with this is to rewrite the Lord's Prayer. Um, to expand on it a little bit just for myself uh, so that it has some new meaning to it. Uh, so, and what I want to encourage you to do is, is the same thing. I want to encourage you to take some time, go line by line through this prayer, and just write out what it means to you. Uh, write out how God is using it in your life. Uh, write it out in, 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 as, if, as if it was being written today for the first time for you and for our church. Uh, so here's one example of what that might sound like. God of love who lives and reigns in the heavens, remind us of the sacredness and the healing in your name. Let peace on this earth rain down from heaven above. Let your love and mercy spread from person to person, flooding the concrete streets and the growing forests with your vision of restoration. Offer us what we need each morning when we awake, that we can be your kingdom here on earth. May we see you in ourselves and remember we are forgiven. And may we see you in the other so that when it seems impossible to forgive, we would have the audacity to do so still. Because to you belong the nations of heaven and earth, the authority and the magnificence of it all, in the darkest and brightest of times, forever and ever. Amen. Even when you're scared, unsure of your will to cope with tomorrow's threats, remember, adapt or die. Embrace risk. Keep your heads up. Grace and peace, everyone. We pray the Spirit of our Lord enables you to accomplish much every day.